A lot of gaming news was bleak this year, and we know that because usually we're the ones reading it out. But it certainly hasn't all been bad, in fact some of the news has been pretty good. So without further ado, let's take a look at some of the best news stories that we saw in 2017. Hellblade Senua's Sacrifice is perhaps one of the most inspiring game stories of this year. The team at Ninja Theory took such a huge risk when they set out to develop this game which released in August and we couldn't be happier that it paid off. It was a big financial and creative risk for the studio, producing an indie game in scope but AAA game in production value, releasing at a sub full price point of about £25. The game's director, Tamim Antoniades, said the game sold better than expected and broke even in approximately three months, where the studio had predicted it would take up to nine months for that to happen. The game bravely and confidently dealt with the heavy theme of mental illness and psychosis, coming up with really creative ways to explore it in ways only a game could. And they didn't just blur the lines between AAA games and indie games, they blurred the lines between what video games can and can't deal with effectively. Hellblade stood out as a real success story this year, whether you rated the game or not, flying the flag both creatively and even ethically for what the games industry can produce. Yeah, it really showed what games can do in, in many, many ways. It showed that you don't have to fit into the mold of AAA or indie. It showed that you can deal with something like mental illness and it showed that you can tell a story in a, in a really effective and, and creative way, in a way that only a game can and, and for those multitude of reasons. And the fact that it succeeded financially, I mean breaking even in three months when they were expecting up to nine months for that to happen. It's all around a, a great success story, a risk that paid off and just creatively an excellent piece of work that, it, you know, it's, it's great that it happened. And it was a good, good game as well. It was decent. <laughs> 2017 was also the year in which the battle royale genre, in which dozens and dozens of players fight out on huge maps in a big survival free-for-all, really took off. And the charge was led, of course, by PlayerUnknown's Battlegrounds, spending almost the full year in early access till it finally launched its 1.0 version on December the 20th. Battlegrounds has sold over 25 million copies. 2017. It's now closing in on reaching 3 million concurrent players on Steam. Battlegrounds breakout success is really like nothing we've seen perhaps ever. It has been the true definition of a phenomenon like the humble yo-yo, the tamagotchi, the hula hoop or the uncle spinny dervish. It's been such a success that already it's been cloned like crazy, especially in China where mobile game ripoffs have really taken off. Even AAA companies here in the west like Rockstar with GTA Online, Techland with Dying Light and most notably Epic Games with their game Fortnite. Some of the clones are so close in fact that player known himself, Brendan Green, has now called for stronger IP laws for video games. The game is still in development and post official launch with 1.0, developers PUBG Core will have their work cut out for the foreseeable future, catering for the game's ever expanding fan base. I mean, the game really did stay in early access the whole year. It only came out right at the end of December. Uh, it also arrived on Xbox just before that as the Microsoft kind of preview program. Despite criticisms about the game on Xbox and the way it runs and whatever, it still sold a million copies in, in 48 hours, which is absolutely phenomenal. It's been successful in and of itself, and it's also spawned loads of copycats and clones and ripoffs. It's been a huge success story this year. I think a large part of this success is due to the amount of streamers and game let's players on, on YouTube and Twitch, for example. You could say it's very similar to the way that Minecraft rose in popularity. That was an early access when it first released, and the same thing happened there. It's worth noting that Microsoft um, acquired Minecraft and uh, Mojang, just like they've acquired the exclusivity rights for playing them Scott Battlegrounds. They obviously saw the same kind of level of attention that Black Battlegrounds was getting, the same as Minecraft did, and they wanted a piece of that pie. So that's that's kind of why they they kind of got their their foot, you know, hand in the pie. I mean, I don't know what what expression to use. Foot in the pie. Their foot. I I don't know. I mean, throw the foot in the ring, hat in the ring. I I, I don't know. It's the fifth video we filmed today. <laughs> it's been a long day. Merry Christmas. Fans of the Assassin's Creed series had a good year this year as well. After Ubisoft gave the franchise a much needed year off last year, Assassin's Creed returned in 2017, taking players back, this time to ancient Egypt. But the series looked different. 
It played different. It was quite a refreshing departure from Assassin's Creed's increasingly tired formula. 2014's Assassin's Creed Unity was described as the lowest point in the franchise by Polygon. Assassin's Creed Syndicate, a year later, was cited as an attempt to fix Unity's clunky movement system that compromised the smooth and limitless free-running the series is known for. But the series needed changes, and Ubisoft finally recognised that. Assassin's Creed Origins has breathed life into the series and into its fan base, selling 100% more than Syndicate in its first 15 days. GameSpot said, quote, Assassin's Creed has undergone many changes in its long and storied history, and Origins feels like the first step in the start of a new journey. It has its fair share of problems, but the vision for its future is one worth pursuing. With a new complex protagonist to fill the hole in our hearts that Ezio Auditore left, a mostly bugless gameplay and no follower missions, Origins has revived a series that a lot of gamers hold dear. And what would a list of 2017's biggest success stories be without mentioning the Triumph family-based developer Studio MDHR and their debut game Cuphead. Cuphead is a run-and-gun action game centered on fighting uniquely designed, wildly animated bosses with an art style that inspired the whimsy and excitement of thousands of players. It has an 88 on Metacritic on PC, it won both Visual Design and Best Xbox Game of the Year, the Golden Joystick Awards, and claimed Best Art Direction, Best Independent Game, and Best Debut Indie Game at the Game Awards 2017. That is not a bad debut. Studio MDHR went from two brothers being quote a couple of dogs in a basement trying to make a game to a platinum game developer almost overnight, selling over 1 million copies two weeks after its release. Though the 1930s cartoon aesthetic of Cuphead attracted its audience, its difficulty level was the hook that kept its players trying again and again and again. And finally, one of 2017's big successes has been the rise of VR, whether you like it or not. The likes of the Oculus Rift, HTC Vive and PlayStation VR have come on leaps and bounds since the technology first entered into the mainstream, but it's still yet to catch the world on fire. Perhaps the biggest reason behind that is that previously there just wasn't that many games that were worthwhile on a AAA level. But this year, AAA companies like Bethesda with Skyrim VR, Fallout 4 VR and Doom VFR and Capcom with Resident Evil 7 have really start to fill the gaps in the VR's catalogue. Not only that, but Sony used its PlayStation Experience event this year to reveal and push a ton of new VR games and modes, like Wipeout VR, Blood and Truth, and even The Last Guardian. One thing's for sure, if VR is to succeed, it needs games. Games sell consoles, and the same, of course, applies to VR. If 2016 was the year of VR hardware, 2017 was definitely the year of VR software. So let's tie this all up then with uh, Nintendo. Obviously, Nintendo had an amazing year in 2017. They released a new console. The Nintendo Switch has been a massive success, a huge rebound compared to the Nintendo Wii U. They shifted 10 million units in its first nine months. That puts it neck and neck with the PS4. They could not ask for a better start to the console. That has been fueled um, by great games. It didn't have the best lineup when it arrived in March, but that was okay because it was March. Uh, it's not the Christmas run-up. First, people were asking questions. Why bring out a new console in March? Why not do it before Christmas like everyone else does? It turned out to be something of a masterstroke, really. It's, it's on track to dominate Christmas this year. They've got games like uh, Zelda Breath of the Wild and uh, Super Mario Odyssey, which are kind of, you know, pack-leading uh, Game of the Year contenders in a year full of contenders, let's, let's be honest. It has been a very good year for video games in many ways. And Nintendo are just absolutely bossing it. It's only fair to assume that it's going to be like this for the next few years now with the Switch sales really doing well. Well done, Nintendo. I got a Nintendo Switch. You didn't get one, did you, Mike? I didn't get one. Maybe you should get one. We could be Nintendo Bros. Nintendo Bros. I'm sorry I said that. But Nintendo who famously already have brothers as mascots. <laughs> Nintendo, <laughs> the, yeah. Mario and Luigi, man. You could, you could be Luigi. Yes. I could be Mario. Yep. So it. Nintendo Bros. That's us, guys. Nintendo Bros. <laughs> <laughs> Moving swiftly onwards. <laughs> The other thing that we haven't mentioned in the voiceover was the success that was near Automata and the success that it brought to Platinum Games. The developers behind Nier Automata were in a bit of trouble and it was only on the back of the success of Nier Automata um, that they've able, been able to stabilize the, the company essentially. Hideki Kamir, who's one of the lead developers in Platinum Games, actually said that if it wasn't for Yoko Taro, it's no exaggeration to say that he saved Platinum Games by making Nier Automata. So it's, it's a great game apparently by all, by all accounts really is, yes. um, you've you played it and you've yeah. loved it so you know it's a success outside of the game itself that is a success for the company and everybody involved in the production. The last thing that was a success this year was us, our channel Mike. We've seen a, a rapid growth in our channel, 50,000 subscribers to 
almost a quarter of a million more. It's a success all around. Let's pop the party poppers and get the champagne out and stuff. Congratulations us. Congratulations us. Congratulations us. And thanks to you guys for watching and shit like that. Just thought I'd have a, a, a bit of a serious moment then. Man. Yeah, just pat them out. No, I'm, 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 I'm okay. <laughs> for, for all people who are interested in the success of this channel, I mean, thanks, guys. I hurt myself a bit then, I'll be honest. Okay, so those are the biggest gaming success stories of 2017. What do you think were the biggest success stories of the year? Let us know down in the comments. Remember to like the video if you enjoyed it, and please do subscribe if you want to see more stuff like this every single day. You can check out that video right there, right now, if you want, and the link to Patreon if you want to support the channel. See you next time.